For every couple, you don't know what your boundaries are going to be until that situation arises. We didn't adopt all of the traditions of our childhood. We started new traditions because it's a new family. My main priority is you. My right. main priority is the kids, and then they come second. I see so many couples where they're still attached to mom and dad. Mm -hmm. Let's admit, I'm the spender, you're the saver. Yep. I love spend money. But at the same time, you're also the breadwinner. We don't keep separate checking accounts, and that's largely because we don't keep secrets from one another. People are gonna hate on this, it's okay. People who do keep separate checking accounts, but when you do that, it's easy to hide things. We believe sex is a good gift from God. Mm -hmm. I'm giving no room. I'm, I am putting to death any temptation, any foothold I can give Satan. When you make an emotional, psychological connection with somebody, over time, it turns physical. What's happening, fam? So glad you're here for the show today. Hey, just want you to know that in the show notes, you can check out the link to my newsletter. Follow, subscribe. It gets you all the information you need on what's happening with the Chris Harper Show. See you on the other side. Babe, I'm so happy you're in studio today. How are you? I'm great. You're my favorite guest in the whole world. I hope so. Let's go. What's one good thing from your day to day? Oh, well, I picked my mom up from the airport today, so it's good. She's coming for a visit. So. Come on. Kids are hyped, aren't they? Kids are so excited that Mimi is here. Yeah, I'm hyped because of the free babysitting. Let's go. A <laughs> couple of date nights, no kids. It's going to be good. Stay with your grandma. Yeah, it's going to be great. Come on. It's great to see her and spend time with her, so it's going to be good. How, long, how many years have we been married? We've been married 15. 15 years. You know... There's this, there's this myth. There's this myth um, in the church today that um, the divorce rate outside the church, right? Like secular divorce rates, I think it's 50, 52 percent, something like that. Mm -hmm. But they they meet like it, it's the same inside the church, which is not true. It's not. No, it is when you're talking about nominal believers or nominal Christians. So people that have like one foot inside the kingdom, one foot outside. But when you look at committed Christian couples, the divorce rate like drops to like 10, 12% if you're committed to Jesus being at the center of the marriage. So one, I'm blowing up that myth today. Those are not the same, right? You're basically talking about the same groups. Those outside the church and those halfway committed really are the same people. Mm -hmm. But those who are truly committed to this institution of marriage, right? Christ at the center of the marriage, they just don't get divorced. But today we're going to talk about the three things that that tend to crush a marriage or the three things that when people do get divorced, like this is what they trace it back to. Um, money, so finances. Right. In-laws, which mine just came in. Let's go. And then sex. So that's what we're talking about today. Right. Boundaries, specifically the boundaries you and I have set around money, in-laws, and sex. And since mm -hmm. your mom just got in, let's talk about in-laws because that hasn't always been easy for us. Right. It's been well, fairly it, easy. Well, I mean, it's been pretty easy, but the but every situation is different. Right. And um, I think in any marriage, I mean, you don't go in with your husband and say, okay, here's the checklist of everything we need to talk about right. and set a boundary because – your ba your and I's boundaries are going to be different than right. Jane and Jack's next door because they have a different situation. Do Jane and Jack really live next door? No. Okay. I, I don't know who lives did. next door. I mean, I know who lives next door. I just don't remember their names. Okay, that's fair. So, but you know what I'm saying? Like for every couple, you don't know what your boundaries are going to be until that situation arises. You can right. set a boundary in a in a nominal sense, saying you know, um. Your parents are like this, and so we need as a family to do this. Yeah. But if a different if a different situation arises, then of course you have to talk as a couple yeah. and and do that together instead of having the input of your in laws. Yeah, I think I think our biggest <laughs> thing was, you know, we kind of settled, and this is really good because I've seen a lot of families take this overboard, right? Like um the one side of the family gets super excited that they're inheriting a daughter or the other side of the family gets super excited that like 
um, I don't have a son in law. I have a son in love, right? I've heard that. Right. When the reality is, like, one, it's just not biblical, and two, it's not true. Like, like in the Bible, um, man and woman, they leave and cleave. So they leave their families to go start their own family. Right. And one of the things we've done really well is, man, we honor your parents. We honor my dad. Like, like we respect that. And we do things with them. We vacation with them. We spend holidays with them. But at the end of the day, our family comes first. Right. Like the family you and I have built comes first. And, and sometimes we'll let grandparents input into that. Sometimes we'll even, you know, we'll, we'll let grandparents supersede that, but, but that's rare. Like right. what we believe. So I'll give you an example. You know, we don't go and visit your mom and dad very much. Mm -hmm. They live 900 miles away. Right. Right. It's hard traveling with four kids. Yes. And it's super expensive. Yes. Right. So what did we tell your mom and dad? Mm -hmm. Hey, for the next few years, if you want to see us, if you want to see your grandkids, guess what? You're going to have to come to us. You're going to have to come to us. Right. I mean, it's that simple. Right. Right. And some people may say, well, that's <laughs> selfish or that's self-centered. No, it's practical. Right. We have four kids all under the age of 12. Like, it sucks taking our toddlers to the airport. Right. It's terrible. Right. And if mm -hmm. we do travel, we usually drive by car because right. it's so much cheaper. That's right. And our kids have gotten used to that for many years, going through the car during the summer right. or during spring break is usually when we travel, when we have nothing planned, when it comes to, um, like for us, for Christmas and Thanksgiving, when the holiday breaks are not, you know, are so small that yeah. we're, we can't take that time no. out of our schedule when we have commitments for our family to go see our other family. We would love to do that, but, for sure. the, but the expense for time and energy and finances, it just is not in yeah. our wheelhouse. And it's not forever. It's a season. No, it's not Like forever. as our kids get older, you know, there may be times where we send them by themselves right. uh, to go vacation with their grandparents. But for right now, one of the boundaries we set is, hey, you want to see us? <clears throat> you got to come to us. And it's, it's funny you mentioned holidays. I, I think it's, it's the holidays where this gets trickiest. Right, because yes. there's a lot of emotion, there's a lot of history. So another good thing that we do, and I'm going to applaud you on this, is we didn't adopt all of the traditions of our childhood. We started new traditions. Right. You know why? Because it's a new family. It's our family. And guess what? One day our daughter is going to grow off and get married, and she's going to have her own family. Right. And she's going to start her own traditions. Right. Right. And we're okay with that. Like we're not taking that personal. But at the same time, there's stuff we do. Like I grew up eating a honey baked ham at Christmas. Right. When we could afford it. Sometimes it was a cheap Kroger ham, but that's okay. It's fine. We're rolling with that, right? We're not turkey people. We're ham people. Well, you're not turkey people. Yeah, you you love some turkey. I do love um Crozier's turkey though. My gosh, it's so good. Yeah. But but we we kept that tradition, right? It reminds me of my mom. You know that. Right. So you gladly get a honey baked ham every Christmas. 100%. I'm more right. than happy to do those things. Yeah. And see, growing up, my family had many traditions, and I love the way that my family did it. Um, but when we came together as a family, not all of those things was I even capable yeah. of being able to, with four kids. My, I mean, you know, my parents had three kids and we have four, but it was just, our lives are different. Yeah. And so we had to adapt to what is, what we wanted to do. Yeah. And as much as I would love to do some of those traditions, it's just not capable for me to do those Yeah. and enjoy them. And I want to be able to enjoy it. Absolutely. And I think that's part of it is, are you enjoying doing the, the traditions? Are you enjoying what you're doing as a family? Yeah. Or are you just miserable trying to keep this thing alive instead right. of being with your your core family of your husband and your children yeah. um, and doing what you want to do to enjoy your life? Are yeah. you trying to keep doing what you've always grown up to? Yeah, yeah. There's 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 sometimes that that unmet expectations and that pressure that comes from outside. Mm -hmm. And man, you know, I think you and I do a good job of setting these boundaries. But I know a lot of couples who like. Like they go into anxiety when their in laws come into town, right? Because right? they let what they think and they let what they feel and they let what they believe affect them so much. 
But you and I clearly stated at the beginning, hey, um, you guys are extended family, Mm -hmm. and this is our immediate family. Mm -hmm. And our priority will always be the immediate family. It doesn't mean we don't honor your mom and dad. It doesn't mean we don't honor my dad. Like we've done some things in the last few years that have, that have really honored my dad, right. right? But but if I ever have to choose between my father and my immediate family, my immediate family come first. Right. Like these people come first. This is who I'm responsible for. This is who I'm I'm to make happy, and this is who I'm to lead and to to raise, right? And not not so much care about what all these other people think or do not think about us. That's huge, right? That's and huge. I think as you come together as a couple and you discuss those things That's and huge. say, um, especially right before an event happens. I mean, I know a lot of people um, that they are one side of the family is super closer than the other side of the family. Yeah. And that's awesome. But I'm hoping that those couples are coming together and saying, we're going to do this as a family because our tiny family, enjoy, our core family enjoys doing that with our extended family. That's right. But we're also going to have these boundaries as well. Yeah. And time time is huge there because I know early on in our marriage, a big fight we got into was, you know, your people would come stay and it would be there wouldn't be a time frame on it. Right. And that would irritate me to no end. Right. And that was my fault because right. I wasn't setting those boundaries. That's right. And it, when, when we say things like that, setting a boundary, it almost, for some people, that sounds like a, a scary word. But right. it's just communicating That's and it. saying. Expectation. An expectation. And, and it was me not telling my mom or my dad or anyone that was coming, hey, can you please come from this time to this time? That's right. This is our. This is the special time that we have carved out for you all to be here to spend That's time it. as a family. Honor them with it. An honor, and it I was. It was that. such a special time, but it became tenuous for us because they would drive in because we were a little closer at that time, and there was no end date. That's right. And even though it it caused us to have friction, it was both frictionous with my my parents as well. That's right. Because I was feeling the same way as well. That's right. But if you set those boundaries and you set those expectations saying, hey, let's do this time to this time. And we're so much better about doing that now. That's right. And I think it's good for them as well. It's good for everybody. It's good for everyone. There's it's no, good for the kids. There's no unmet it's expectations. We know how much time. We can make the most of our time exactly. because we know the window. And again, it honors them more than dishonors them. Right. And I think I think that was big for us. Hey, um, even when we go on vacation, like right. we go to meet, and it's not even just your parents or my dad or even our friends. Right. Like, hey, we're going from this day to this day because at this moment on this day, I'm I'm done. I'm ready to come home. Right. Right? I'm ready to go do our thing. I'm ready for it just to be us. Whatever it is, it's good to have something to look forward to, right, where it's not open-ended. Right. So I think... I think if, if if couples would be proactive, and you said it earlier, like be proactive in setting those boundaries, understanding, hey, we're not adopting all the tra- traditions. Hey, mm-hmm. um, we're not, these holidays were coming, these holidays were not. During this season, we're not coming at all, but you're more than welcome to come to us. Hey, you can stay at our house or we're going to get you a hotel, right? right? Simple things like that, right? And it's not dishonoring. It's just setting those expectations and setting those boundaries. It's exactly. huge. Exactly. It's huge. It'll save you a lot of strife and a lot of fights. Well, and ex- and then also just anxieties of what's going to happen. That's right. I mean, and the kids, um, they get so excited about when they come that, you know, they've got the chains and they've got the markdowns, but then they then they have the question, well, how long is she going to stay? Yeah. Just because they, they want to know how long they have with her to That's just right. enjoy every moment. That's right. And it's a fun time if you make it a positive experience and set those expectations right. instead of worrying the whole time of how long this person's going to be there or how long is th- how long is this dinner going to be or oh we're going to mom and dad's tomorrow well how long yeah. oh, I don't know just as long as we want to that's right like when we went to see your dad the other day yeah. There was an expectation. We're of, leaving at three thirty. We're leaving at two, is what you said. Oh, uh, you said we're we'll gonna leave by two. Yeah, and it got extended. It did, and then people got upset. It was on me, and that's fine. I mean, it it worked itself out, and it wasn't that big of a deal. But we don't get to see your dad very often, and yeah. it was a great time to spend time with him. 
but it was also a thousand degrees outside. Yeah. And we were having too much fun. In the middle of nowhere, Oklahoma. In the middle of nowhere, Oklahoma. And it just got to the point where we could see the kids just deteriorating. Yeah. And they were ready to go home. That's right. And it's hard because you're having a great time and talking to your dad and having those meaningful experiences, but we have to go. Yeah. Like and you and you got that. Like I looked at you that day and I was like, it's time to go. Yeah. Cause at the end of the day, and I love my in-laws. Let me just say, I got the best in-laws in the world. Right. But at the end of the day, my job is to first honor you, mm-hmm. not honor my father-in-law first, not honor my mother-in-law first, not even to honor my own father first, right? Right. And, and biblically, you're supposed to honor your mom and dad, and we do that. But my main priority is you. My right. main priority is the kids, and then they come second. I see so many couples where they're still attached to mom and dad, Mm -hmm. especially those who like go into business with mom and dad. Mm -hmm. I see this all the time. Like when your livelihood is attached to your in-laws livelihood, rarely does that work out. And I know people are going to email and they're going to hate on me on this, right? But like when your lunch money comes from your father-in-law, when your lunch money comes from your mother-in-law, it's a different dynamic. I can't so, even imagine. So another boundary we have is we don't go into business with our folks. No. We don't do it. No. Right? We don't tie money into family, which gets into finances. So right. let's let's leave that because well, I'm gonna get hate. I'm gonna get hate mail, baby. Okay. I was just gonna ask one more question. Because somebody works for their father in law. No, no, no I was just gonna something. ask something totally ask different. Say it, say okay, it. so here's so we're talking about in laws. Yeah. And we're at a great spot where our children are are young yep. and my parents are still young. Yep. What happens when we get to an age like my parents' age? Yeah. And we're at a different part in our lives and we have in-laws that are elderly and we have to take care of them. Yeah. What happens with that boundaries? Yeah. I mean, I think I think we have a biblical mandate to honor our mom, mm-hmm. to honor our dad, right? And that that may look different depending on the context, but you know, if it gets to a point where we have to physically, mentally, emotionally, even financially provide for your mom and dad or my dad, we'll do it. Right. Because we have a mandate to do that, right? Know, but what do those boundaries look like still? Because that's yeah. one of my question. I'm just thinking about, you know, this could be us in the next 20 years, 10 years, yeah. depending on, you know, our parents' health. Yeah. What does that look like as far as our family when we have to take on? Yeah, I, I think the question is, what does it mean to honor them? Mm-hmm. So do you value their life? Mm-hmm. Like, do you still value their wisdom and their input? Do you make them feel important? Do you make them feel loved? I think, I think you've got to ask and answer all those questions. Mm-hmm. And for some, it may be putting them into some type of facility or putting them into some type of care home, right? For some, it may be inviting them into your home if you have that type of space or that type of resources. I don't know. I think it's, I think it's, it's unique for each situation. But the question is, are you honoring that individual that brought you into the world? Right. Are you honoring that individual that cared for you? Are you honoring that individual that maybe didn't care for you as much as you had wanted, right? The right. Bible says, honor your mother and father. It doesn't say honor good moms and dads. Right. It just says, honor your mom and dad. Mm-hmm. You know, I did not have the best childhood experience growing up. One of the things I've wrestled with is how much do I take care of my dad? You know, my dad, as you know, is not well off, right? Right. So I've had to put forth a lot in the last four or five years to to emotionally, physically, financially help meet his needs, but I'm not going to do that to the detriment of my family. Right. Right? So I think I think that's where you've got to find the balance. And I hope our kids would do the same. Right. Right? And I hope we're living in such a way that we're not a burden on them one day. Right. Um, but, but circumstances are circumstances. Right. So let's talk about money since that's what we're talking about. Right. Number two reasons that marriages break up because of financial stress, right? Mm-hmm. So what are some boundaries you and I have around money? Hmm, that's interesting. Right, because because let's admit, I'm the spender, you're the saver. Yeah. I love to spend money. But at the same time, you're also the breadwinner. Yeah, that's right. And I keep the books. Right. Right? Right. Because you get anxious about that. It. We would we would live on the side of the road if I had Yeah, it. there'd be no lights on. There'd be no lights on. Yeah, yeah. And, so. and I know that about myself. Like, right. Like, you constantly have to tell me, have you paid this? Have you paid this? And most of the time yeah. I don't. Right. I mean, I will. It just takes yeah. me longer. Yeah. I and, would rather just pay it because I know it's paid. Right. Yes. And I don't know why I have that anxiety and I'm working on that and I'm yeah. getting better. But at the same time, it's. So one of the things I I had to die to self. Right. 
because I am the breadwinner, I would spend money however I wanted without asking you. Right. Because I thought it was my right to do that. Mm -hmm. And I had to come to you and apologize for that. Right. Like the time I bought a motorcycle without telling you. Mm -hmm. That was a bad move. What else? We don't have to get into all that. Can we? There's something else sitting in our front yard. The bought a bought a car without telling you, <laughs> right? Right. So, so I had to seek forgiveness, apologize, and just because I make the majority of the money doesn't mean I get to decide what to do with the majority of the mm-hmm. money, right? right? So one of the things we do is when we make a financial purchase of any type of significance, we agree on it. Right. We pray about it. We probably need to pray more about those things, right. but we talk about it, right? Mm-hmm. Another thing we do is we don't keep separate checking accounts. No. We keep one checking account. We have one saving account. What's mine is yours, and what's yours is mine. It's a picture of the gospel, right? When we got married, I was poor and broke. You had a savings account. Right. As soon as we got married, it was magic. I had a savings account, too. It exactly. was spectacular. It was, yeah, right? it was true. So we don't keep che- separate checking accounts, and that's largely because um, we don't keep secrets from one another. Right. And again, people are going to hate on this. It's okay. People who do keep separate checking accounts, but when you do that, it's easy to hide things. Right. It's easy to I can't hide what I'm spending money on. Right. If I've got a subscription to Pornhub, you see it because everything's linked to one account. Right. Right. If I go out and spend three hundred dollars at a bar, guess what? You know about it because you have access to the account. We don't hide those things from one another. So that's that's certainly a boundary we've set up when it comes to finances. Right. Right. Another. Go ahead. Well, I was just gonna say, and something we also do is we we weekly check in. That's right. On things that we're spending, on yeah. budgets, on things that, like we did. Was it last night or night before last? Yeah. Where you're literally- all these summer camps are killing me, man. Yeah, well, summer we're... camps are so expensive. Mm-hmm. What are we doing? Sending our kids away so we can have a moment. Come on, that's real. That's worth <laughs> it. That's worth but, it. But no, but seriously, I mean, we needed to sit down and say, okay, this is what's coming out. Yeah, this is what we're planning on. And you said, okay, how? What? What else is coming up? And I said, yeah. school supplies. And you're like, the kids aren't even at camp yet. And I said, I know, yeah. but we got to go ahead and get school supplies. Let's and push you that forward a little and bit. you said, hey, can we wait till August? And I said, of course we can wait till August. Yeah. But that's a conversation. Like I don't have to go out tomorrow to right. Target and buy all the school, which I would love to do so I can get it over with. Yeah. But the fact that I know. It's communication. That's right. It's knowing that, no, we have to pay the light bill this week. That's right. Can we please not do that, you know, spend $200 on school supplies and yeah. uniforms? Instead, can you wait? And listen, we're not the best at keeping a budget. No, we're not. But we, 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 we need to be better. Yes. But we do keep a budget. I mm-hmm. mean, we, we are very mindful of what's coming in, what's going out. So not only is it um, transparency as a boundary, but it's also we try to live beneath our means. Um, we're trying to live below our means so that we can stay ahead. Mm-hmm. Where couples get in trouble is when they live above their means, right? Mm-hmm. And then you've got to maintain that. And again, we've not always been the best at this, mm-hmm. um, but we do a good job of of maintaining that. And something else we haven't talked about, we give regularly to the church. 100%. Yeah, yeah. I'm not going to tell you what we give, but we give regularly first and foremost to our church. And we mm-hmm. believe in that. We believe in the biblical principle of charity generosity, um, not so much the Old Testament tithe, but we believe in this principle of of giving to the storehouse, which is our local church. So right. those are those are three financial practices, three boundaries that we put in place that that A have kept us afloat mm-hmm. and that have helped us. Right. In laws, money, sex. That's the last thing. Why do I always want to sing the song every time we talk about sex? I want to say. I was going to say, let's talk about sex, sex baby. baby. <laughs> let's talk about you <laughs> and me. You know who sang that? Who? Who sang it? I don't remember. You always ask me these questions and I Come never remember. Come on, I'm not telling you. You're going to okay. have to look it up. I'll look it up. So, oh, I do. Hey, I, I do know. Somebody said I didn't know. I do know who sang it. Let's talk about sex, baby. Who is um, it? He doesn't know. Color me bad. Is Boom. It, are you sure? 100. Color me bad. We're gonna get we're gonna get the four one one. So that. listen. Uh huh. We believe sex is a good gift from God. Mm-hmm. Right. We do. I like to tell people when you and I make love, like God and the angels are cheering us on. 
Well, right. It's a gift from God. It's a gift from God. We're doing it in the context of marriage. Exactly. We're doing it in the context of the marriage bed, right? And we're, I think we're doing it in all the ways that honors the Lord. Right. So what are some boundaries, some sexual boundaries we've set? <clears throat> um, I think 100% no porn. Yeah. Um, and even for me... Um, Erotic novels. And yeah. Even for me, I... I've really struggled with this this last, not last year, the last two years, is um, all of the novels that have come out recently um, that people talk about, um, I've really struggled. I am a reader. I love to read. I love to read all kinds of books. Um, I'm not big into romance books because, of course, they can get spicy. Right. Um, And I would rather read about a serial killer than people meeting at a bookstore and falling in love. It's just the way that I am. I love a good Hallmark movie. I know. You love Hallmark movies, and I don't, and that's okay. Um, It's weird. But there are so many books now that are being written, and I struggle with the fact that that's the same thing as people call it soft porn. Yes, word porn. But it's word porn. What are we doing? Um, And I really struggle with that, and I struggle with – some of my friends and I've and I'm not gonna lie. I've read some of these novels. Um, I didn't re- read um, Fifty Shades or anything like that, um, but I know many people that did. Um, and I'm not here to condemn you, but I'm just saying, think about what you're reading in the confines of it's in your brain. I'm here to what say it. If but what if it was on a screen? If it's on a screen, yeah. is it the same thing? Yeah, it is the um, same thing. And to really, um, especially women, to just really think and contemplate about what we're reading. Um, and if we are fantasizing about these men, most of them fictional, um, actually 95% of it is fictional. That's right. Um, how are we elevating our husbands to that? How are we looking at our husbands after that? And I feel like I just need to speak out to women and say, I need you to think about that. Like, think and pray on how you're using these escapist things and then compare them to your husband. And they'll never match up. That's right. Um, You're setting yourself up for failure. You are. And you're setting your husband up for failure as well. And he doesn't deserve that. And you don't deserve that because it's it's a lot. Yeah. Um, And so I've really struggled with that. Um, I also struggle with with certain restaurants. Yeah. We've had this discussion. I love Hooters Wings. Mm -hmm. The the twice-baked. I love them. I think they're the best wings on the planet. But now I stopped going to the restaurant because it is scantily clad women, right, that just conjure up um, images, which I don't need any of that. But I did. I got it takeout, Uber Eats, Mm -hmm. and that did not make you happy at all. No. So guess what I stopped doing? Right. I don't do Hooters takeout anymore. Right. Any any restaurant that blatantly degrades women, I stay away from. Right. Yeah, so we're trying to be... Not just a porn-free marriage bed, but an erotic, erotica-type free marriage bed, right. right? Where we're not being enticed, where we're not. I mean, I don't even, I don't even ride in the same car by myself as the opposite sex, right? Right. I don't, I don't keep movies, but keep movies, keep meetings by myself with the opposite sex, right. right? Like I'm, I'm giving no room. I'm, I am putting to death any temptation, any. Um, any foothold I could give Satan for me to be unfaithful to you and not just be unfaithful to you physically, mm-hmm. but to be unfaithful to you emotionally. Right. To be unfaithful to you uh, mentally, right? Mm-hmm. Um, they did a big study about, about people who had, um, you know, an affair. And what they discovered is it's never about the sex. It's all about the nostalgia. Right. It's all about the memories. It's all about the emotions, right? Um, affairs are rarely physical in nature. They begin as an emotional, psychological connection, and then it turns sexual. Mm-hmm. So, bro, we're not leaving any room for that. Right. And we're and I think that off. There's another, there's a term, especially, I mean, I'm not in the workforce anymore, but I can see how this can develop is this whole work wife, work husband yeah, mentality. No time for that. Um, it I struggle with seeing seeing these people talk about this. And I mean, you are my only husband. That's right. 
I am only your only wife. Yeah, I don't have a work wife. You know what I mean? I ain't got time for that. Yeah, you know, I don't. Why have... would I want two wives anyways? You're enough to handle. Well, yeah, I don't understand why people have to. And then you have your inside jokes and your funny lunch meetings no and all this stuff. That's that's not that do, that just opens doors after 100%. doors after doors. I mean, you have already opened it and put a toe in. Which is why men and women can't be friends. Which I know people hated on us for that, but it is the God's honest truth. When you when you make an emotional psychological connection with somebody. Over time, it turns physical. It can't help but turn physical right. for someone. I'm not saying either party is guilty, but for someone, it, it crosses a line or someone wants it to cross a line, mm -hmm. which is why you got to guard against that. And listen, I'm not saying you can't have guys or girls that are acquaintances. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying that. Right. I've got girls that are acquaintances. Well, but I don't have friends. Well, you have friends, but not where it's the people that you out, best Hang friend. Hang out with. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that's, like, what, that's what I'm defining as friends. I have no girls that are friends. Even right. even girls that I'm acquaintances with, that you're friends with. Right. Like a boundary I have, like if I've got to text them something, I include their husband on the text. 100%. If I've got to email them something, I include the husband on the email. Like I am leaving no room for error. Right. Like we both do that, which that's I right. really appreciate. That's it. Like when we call people to have dinner, yep. or even when we have um, we have neighbors down the street that have kids that are the same age as ours. That's right. And if we need something, and you say, "Hey, can you text so and so and ask him this?" Yeah, I'm texting his wife 100%. and him one hundred percent. Me too. Yeah, like with no room for error, right? right? And that's not because I don't trust you. It's not because you don't trust me. It's simply because why would I give the devil a foothold? If he is going to wreck 52% of marriages, right, mm -hmm. why would I give him a foothold into mine? I'm not. I'm going to set those boundaries. You're the only person I'm going to run after. You're the only person I want to lust after. You're the only person I want to see naked. Like, like those are the boundaries I want to set, and I want to keep that going. Okay. Boundaries around in-laws, boundaries around money, boundaries around sex. Let's keep the fire going. I want to sex you up. I think that's color me bad. That's color me bad. Oh, What's the, the other, other one? one was salt, salt and pepper. And pepper. See, I Peppa. knew. I said that. No, you said pepper. Like I said Peppa. You know, that's real. Thanks, Jake. Appreciate it. See you next time. <laughs>